Hello, everybody. This is Brother Aiden with ChristianInterviews.com. I have a very, very special guest, and I think you're going to love his stories and uh, what he's done for the Lord. As you know, we give away these interviews for free to help build up the body of Christ. I have uh, President Nilo on. He's the president of the missionary organization. Uh, also, uh, call him Brother Nilo, and he's a powerful man of God. I'll brag on you first a little bit, and then, um, of course, you can add or subtract uh, whatever you want from you know from your bio. Uh, Nilo has smuggled literally millions of Bibles into Russia when it was communist Russia, and then later China, um, and also has a large internet outreach uh, into um, a Muslim community, and other communities, and uh, is just doing a tremendous work for the Lord. Uh, Brother Nilo, how are you? Yeah, I'm very well. We have a good and a bright morning here in Sacramento, so I'm well. Great. And where are you from originally? Originally, I was uh, born in Finland, uh, and uh, my parents, uh, my father was uh, a preacher in the Pentecostal movement in Finland. I, I grew up in a Christian family, and then uh, we moved o- moved over to Sweden and uh, then back to Finland again. So I've been living in, the, in Scandinavia and uh, uh, working out from there. Right. And since other people uh, may not have heard of the organization and the work that you do for the Lord, what, what, I'd, what I'd like to ask first is if you could share the things that you've done in the past um, and then the things that you're doing now, and then especially um, a couple of stories uh, that uh, will help people see the vision and, and, and everything like that. Yeah, in the past, uh, I'm, uh, I'm leading... Uh, a mission uh, media mission organization in Finland called Key Media. It's also connected in USA. We have uh, our own office also in US. And um, in the past, uh, we have uh, been doing a lot of Bible printing and Bible distribution. Uh, during the time of uh, Soviet Union, we used to take in smuggling Bibles from Finland. <clears throat> because we have a long common border with uh, with Russia, so we took over using different methods the Bibles into the Soviet Union and blessing the Christians uh, living there because the Bible was a forbidden book during that time. And uh, after the collapse of uh, Soviet Union, we did not need to smuggle the Bibles anymore so we took them by lorries uh, millions of bibles and and uh, christian books uh, into our neighboring country uh, and uh, after a while we started to work into china uh, with bible printing as you know uh, there is a great revival taking place in china uh, some uh, 30,000 people every day are coming to know the Lord. Yeah, there is a great revival taking place in China. Um, Some 30,000 people are coming to know the Lord uh, uh, every day. So there is a tremendous need of of Bibles. Uh, And um, during the years, we've been able to to print Bibles, more than 10 million copies of Bibles to the Chinese house church movement and blessing them with the word of God. Uh, in the past, we used to smuggle in the Bibles using Russia, uh, from Russia over to China, but nowadays we are printing the Bibles inside China. Uh, and uh, 10 years ago, we started to work strongly into the Muslim world and now we are running a 24-7 satellite channel called Al Hayat, the Life Channel uh, in Arabic. And uh, then we have Kanal Hayat in Turkish. And we are reaching millions of Muslims all over North Africa, Middle East, and the Turkish belt uh, with the gospel. And we have seen a tremendous breakthrough taking place uh, uh, when we started with the, with the 
satellite TV and uh, with the internet sites. Uh, every year we we'll, we receive hundreds of thousands of feedback coming from the Muslim world. Uh, actually, last year we were crossing the one million uh, border. We received one million one hundred thousand feedback from uh, from. Uh, Altogether, 180 different countries, because you have Arab, Arab-speaking people all over the world. And uh, this year, already after three months, uh, January, February, March, we have uh, received uh, more than one million feedback from all over the world. And uh, the, we have uh, between 30 and 40 million viewers every week on uh, Al Hayat. Uh, the, the Arab-speaking satellite channel, and uh, we know that every month thousands of uh, uh, Muslims are coming to know the Lord uh, through the satellite channel. So we are really living exciting times today. Wow, praise God, that's a big work. How many other uh, Christian satellites are there projecting into the Muslim countries? Altogether, you mean? Yes. Uh, there are many different Christian channels, maybe maybe at least 10 different channels, uh, but the key media is using Al Hayat and it's uh, totally focusing on, uh, on uh, uh, Muslims. Uh, many of the satellite channels sending into the Muslim world is more uh, creating programs for the Christian minority and minorities in those countries, but we are we are totally concentrating on reaching the Muslims, and uh, <clears throat> we have seen, uh, as I told you, a, a great breakthrough. Uh, we see imams coming to the Lord. We receive feedback from Saudi Arabia, which is one of the most difficult countries on the earth. People are giving their life online to Jesus and in uh, live shows. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's it's amazing. We we see a great hunger and thirst in the Muslim world. People are not satisfied with the religion they grew up with, and they are looking for something else. That's powerful. Yeah, yeah. I knew that that was the difference on your satellite, as that it's not targeting Christians, but you know Muslims for um, you know, for salvation, and the the fruit is large. So. What um maybe you could just tell us uh, tell the the, the listeners because we have a lot of listeners around the world um um two two stories maybe the the wildest Bible smuggler story you have and maybe one of the wildest um, recent uh, you know conversion testimonials that have come in through the TV or internet ministry. One of the most uh, touching experiences I had, I am, uh, I have not personally been uh, smuggling Bibles into into China, but uh, into Soviet Union I used to do that. Uh, and for the first time, I did my uh, did uh, my first trip into St. Petersburg from Finland. Of course, we were always praying and uh, and fasting some couple of days before the trip and and uh, hiding the Bibles in the suitcases and uh, around our bodies. And then we were asking the Lord uh, to blind the eyes of the of the guards on the borders. And uh, very often uh, he did it, and we were able to take in the Bibles. But my first trip, when I ended up in uh, St. Petersburg, uh, and we found the address of one Christian house, uh, and uh, we we took all the Bibles and placed uh, those Bibles on the table in the living room. And then one uh, elderly lady, Russian lady, came into the room. We could not uh, uh, communicate because I was not able to speak the Russian language, and she was not able to, to speak the Finnish or English language. So, but when she realized that so many Bibles in her living room on the on the table. Immediately, she fell down on the knees, lifted her hands up to the sky and started to praise the Lord, tears rolling out from her eyes. And she was really blessed by the gift coming from uh, from Finland. And, uh, and uh, she knew that uh, 
so many people we are going to be blessed by the books and uh, and uh, so very often we have the experiences like that uh, on my third trip uh, uh, when uh, <clears throat> when we took the bibles over to soviet union they found the bibles in my suitcase and they took me to the back door and and uh, interrogated me and tried to find out where uh, where I was on my way to bring those bibles and uh, after that I was blacklisted uh, I was not able to receive the visa to Soviet Union until the collapse of of uh, of that time of, of Soviet Union but after that of course I've been able to travel into Russia and uh, now we are in good cooperation uh, with the Christian churches and providing them with the literature and with Bibles. How long uh, did they interrogate you for? Uh, how long? Yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe some couple of hours, and uh, they were threatening me that they, if I'm not telling them the truth, they will, they will put me in jail and uh, and so on. But I only told them that um, I know that you have uh, churches here in. Uh, in Russia, and where a church is, there is a Bible. So I told them I was on my way to take the take the Bibles into to some of the existing churches. And when they could not get anything out of me, they they left me, and and then I was, as I said, I was blacklisted after that. But nowadays, we are using the electronic media mainly. So we don't need to smuggle any Bibles anywhere uh, anymore uh, because uh, people can uh, people can download from from the internet. We have uh, 14, 15 internet sites only in the Arabic language, and people are downloading on monthly basis between two, two and three million downloads every month. They are downloading Bibles, New Testaments. Uh, uh, books uh, with the witnesses of um, Muslim background believers, how they came to know the Lord, and uh, and uh, Christian songs and uh, all kind of materials. They are downloading and uh, and uh, via internet. Uh, they they can uh, they can. Uh, we don't need to take the Bible into Saudi Arabia, smuggle it in. They can do it. Uh, on the on the internet, so we are living in exciting times in that way. Yeah, that is so powerful and and very smart um, too. And it's uh, just using it for, for that way. Um, so, what kind of stories uh, can you share of Alman's getting saved, or um, other testimonies coming in, more of the extreme testimonials? Yeah, I can I can tell you about uh, the the feedbacks we are receiving from the. From the Muslim world, uh, some years ago, maybe two, three years ago, one uh, one imam, it means a Muslim religious leader. He was calling from Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have every week live shows uh, on uh, on the Al Haya channel, and actually those live shows are broadcasted uh, here from U.S. Uh, we have some Muslim background believers living here in U.S. and uh, and broadcasting those uh, programs live on uh, on uh, the channel satellite channel and then we have a call center uh, a phone number is running on the tv set and the people uh, wherever they are watching the programs they can uh, they can call so one uh, iman one uh, one spiritual leader in saudi arabia was calling and uh, he he was uh, he was speaking with someone in the call center, and uh, then he told that uh, I've been watching your programs for uh, for some months, and now I am convinced that Jesus is something more than a prophet. He's the savior of the world. And uh, and then the counselor asked uh, him, uh, "Ah, do you want to give your life to Jesus now?" And then he said that, uh, "Yeah, that's the reason why I am calling." And then the council asked ask him, could we pray together now? And uh, the imam uh, uh, answered that, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I want, but I have uh, one problem. 
What is your problem? I have one problem because we are 26 others. There are 26 others with me in the room. So altogether, there were 27 Saudi Arabian Muslims listening uh, and watching the Al Hayat uh, live show. And then the council asked to put the loudspeaker on, and uh, she was uh, he was praying for that uh, iman plus 26 other Muslims in Saudi Arabia and led all of them into the kingdom of God. Praise God. <laughs> so that's that's amazing and, and and powerful. And one of the most touching stories, uh, feedback uh, was coming actually from Turkey. One guy was calling, uh, he was sending a letter, and he told in the letter that uh, the last three nights I have seen the prophet Jesus in my dreams. Uh, and then he continued, on the fourth night, Jesus, in my dream, presented one man to me and said that this man is my friend and he is going to show you the way to the light. And then the man continued, next morning and next day I started to watch uh, Kanal Hayat. It's the Turkish channel directed into the Muslim, uh, Muslim society. I started to watch and... Uh, I was amazed because the the guy who was leading, the preacher, the pastor who was leading that program was exactly the same guy that Jesus revealed to me the last night in my dream. And then the Muslim wrote, now I am in shock. You you have to help me to find a way to the truth. So wow. this, this kind of stories are coming in from the Muslim world. Very often they they have dreams, they have miracles, angels, or personally Jesus is revealing himself to them. And, and uh, because of those kind of experiences, they are opening their heart for Jesus. Wow. Um, Brother Nilo, what do you think the most misunderstood thing about Jesus is? In, in Islam? Islam or in, or in Christianity, or both. Uh, if I if I talk about uh, about the Islam, uh, they they respect Jesus as one of the prophets inside Islam. But the problem is that Jesus is only one of the prophets, and then the seal of the prophet prophets inside Islam is of course Prophet Muhammad. Uh, the, so the big misunderstanding in Islam of Jesus is that he is only one of many prophets and uh, he is not the son of God. He is just an, just an ordinary man and uh, he was not uh, crucified on the cross for our sins and he never rose up from the dead. So there are a lot of misunderstanding in Islam and we need to explain for them that Jesus is really unique. He is the only person who can uh, who can save us and forgive our sins. Uh, of course, inside Christianity, the, the one of the great misunderstandings uh, mis misunderstandings of uh, Jesus is that he is only a religious leader, and uh, he he came down to the earth to start some kind of religion. But uh, of course, that's not. Uh, what the Christianity is about. Jesus is not uh, uh, a founder of a religion. He is the Lord, the almighty, almighty God who came down on the earth and he wants, to, uh, he wants to fill our life with his presence. And instead of giving us the religion, he will give us the relationship with the divine God. So there is... Uh, this is something we should proclaim all over the world. Amen. That's, a, that's absolutely true. Um, how important is mentorship in your life and uh, ministry and in the life of lives of you know new believers and older believers? Mentorship is very important. Uh, uh, you have to you have to be a team worker. 
Uh, in Finland, we have a team of uh, of different workers with different gifts, um, and uh, and together we are forming a powerful team, being able to 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 reach the different countries and the different religions with the gospel of of uh, Jesus Christ. And when we talk about the converted Muslims. Because they are, now they are coming into the king, kingdom of God in uh, in uh, in masses. We are talking about thousands and thousands of Muslims giving their life to Jesus all over the world. Uh, they they need a new family. They need sisters. They need brothers. Because very often uh, what happens is that um, they they are rejected from the communities they will be kicked out from the families and in many places they are heavily persec- per- persecuted and even killed in some places so they need new sisters new brothers new fathers new families so follow up team uh, i mean the follow up work is um, is the biggest biggest challenge we are living in middle of today. We we don't have problems leading Muslims to the Lord, but our biggest problem is to find enough follow up workers, mentors who will stand beside them and take care of them. And that's the reason why we have been building a, an international network with many workers, local believers all over the world and some uh, follow-up centers taking care of those who have given their life to Jesus. Yeah, that is powerful. That is so, so good. Um, we're going to wrap up the interview here, but I really want you to share your website and how anybody can help. Yeah, uh, we have um, we have a website here in the U.S. Uh, concentrating on the Arab and the Muslim work. It's www.ministriesnetwork.org. Altogether, ministriesnetwork.org. And then uh, Key Medias, uh, English uh, uh, net uh, address is keymedia.org. Keymedia.org. So if you are interested in knowing more about the, about the work into China, into Russia, and into the Turkish belt and the Arab world, uh, we would be happy to answer your questions. And if you feel that God is calling you to, to do something for the Muslims, for the Chinese people, for the Russians, we have the channels where we can uh, where we can help to fulfill the the need and and the feeling you have for those countries. Amen. Yeah, we will print those websites um, and link it on our site uh, also. So thank you so much for your time, uh, Nilo, and um, it's been a real pleasure. You've stirred my spirit, and uh, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, listeners uh, understand the impact um, because Jesus uh, died for a Muslim the same way he died for an American or Finland or Englishman or whatever. You know, so, yeah, and so. I, I have one one request because we have just recently opened uh, an internet TV in in Urdu language, and we are on the way to launch uh, a satellite channel also in Urdu. Urdu is spoken in uh, Pakistan, uh, partly in Afghanistan, and in the north part of India. And all of us know that uh, the fanatic Islam is ruling in those countries, in those places, especially in Pakistan. Pray for us so we can be guided by the Holy Spirit, so we find the right persons who are going to run the channel. And uh, and uh, we can really enter into the Muslim communities in the Urdu-speaking world and uh, touch them with the gospel and instead of instead of the darkness and hate, hatred and, and fear they are living with, we can bring the hope of the gospel of Christ to them. Amen. Amen. And I, I, I might actually have a connection for you for Pakistan, so I'll email you uh, separately, uh, Brother Nilo. Thank you again so much for your time. Um, it's been a real pleasure. 
and uh, we're going uh, uh, to conclude uh, this interview here.